costumes are unbelievable. They're going to be one of the best parts of the movie. Since it was in the future, there was nothing holding me back to be able to be a little bit more creative and artistic. It's not what I expected. Everybody always says, well, the book was much better. Well, I think we are really attempting to make a movie that the movie is going to be as good as the book. I think mostly what excited me was the fact that it was in the future. If you just do a little bit of the black. Yes. We had discussions with Suzanne who basically said, you do clothes, I don't. Use your best judgment. So I was very happy to hear that. Well, when I read it the first time, I really was excited about the fact that uh, you could, that as a makeup artist, I was going to be able to encompass just about everything I've ever learned, which is everything from injury to prosthetics to beauty makeup. I mean, we had camouflage makeup. I mean, we had it all in this film, and it was so much fun to create all of these different looks. Well, we do really have three distinct worlds in this film. We start off in District 12, which is a very much Grapes of Wrath type of situation. We talked a long time about District 12. Post-war American feeling, but not a period film. It just has that feeling. And since District 12 is a coal mining town, we decided to go with a lot of gray. A lot of grays and beiges. It's a very bland and dreary kind of a place. We decided that the peacekeepers would be all in white, because I believe there's a description in the book that they're in white. And I don't know if I'm ever going to do white uniforms again as long as I live. Uh, anybody else have any spots on their pants? <laughs> again, we tried to stay true to the book. And you know, it's a gent came in with blonde hair. We turned her dark, and she's just a chocolate brown. And Josh walked in with dark hair, as dark as mine, and you know we had to bleach it out a couple times and color it. I dyed my hair blonde, which is a new experience for me. I'm used to it now, though. It's weird because I can't picture myself with like dark hair now. It's crazy. My smile is so ingenuine. People are gonna think that I hate her. I know. In some ways, we're gonna hate each other. Everybody seems to think she looks really spectacular with her dark hair, and I tend to agree. You look beautiful. I made something out for you too. One of the important dresses is her reaping dress. And we did go with the description in the book that she wears a blue dress. We actually found vintage fabric that we then dyed to the perfect color. We wanted a simplicity but an elegance to the dress, something that could have been her mother. So that's one instance where we really did follow the book. Happy trinket. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's get ready to go. We do get a little glimpse of what Capital City is going to look like when Effie arrives. We decided that possibly Effie comes to District 12 and she tones herself down because she would almost look like a clown showing up there if she was in her full-blown Capital City look. This is how we safeguard our future. I just love that. <sighs> Capital was definitely a collaborative effort. Uh, Judiana and I spoke about this weeks and weeks on end before we ever even came here. It's futuristic, but we decided not to do it sort of futuristically. We decided to have it a very recognizable fashion so that people could relate to it. We really wanted to have something that was like very avant-garde, you know, things that you only really see like in magazines that nobody would ever really wear in real life. And we kind of took that and kind of got even more far out. First of all, what I think is great about the costumes is that it's not what I expected. When you read the book, you think, well, they're gonna go futuristic. What's great is that they went back as well as forward. You know, you've got elements from the 20s, from the 30s, from the 40s, from the 60s, it's all mixed up, which is what I think it would sort of be. I don't think I can think of a movie where hair color has ever been showcased like it will be in this. We have tangerine hair, lime green hair, just so many different things. So here's our creative table. We've got every type of hair goods on this. Pink bows, we've got red puff balls. We have green, great colors. You can see the texture in Capital City is really odd. You know, here, in this, in this time, we like smooth, beautiful hair. What's beautiful in that culture is kind of what we would not want. It's very frizzy, very unnatural. 
I tell you, it's a trick to take something that you would normally wear on Halloween and make it into this luxurious city. We are actually trying to implement a eyebrow bleaching scenario for all of them. See, be prepared to have your eyebrows bleached. <laughs> what are we looking at? My, my eyebrows oh, that have disappeared? Cool. Or? It just gives them such an odd, creepy look. <laughs> Like she said, when you think it's over the top, you, you go twice as far. You know, we have a lot of fuchsia and turquoise and pink. But in order to make it look not silly, we have a lot of black. There's a meanness to the Capitol. I mean, they like to watch children kill each other. So we decided a lot of black in there to mute the sort of brightness of the outrageous colors. So what are you guys? a A box. Tongueless servants being punished Ooh. for some unknown crime. The what happened to your tongue? They cut it out. We're not allowed to talk anymore. They're my who slaves. Are you? I'm part of the Capitol. Okay. Happy Hunger Games! Effie is definitely a character that is built from the outside in, as you can see. She has a lot going on. She's got the insane makeup and clothes and hair. She's basically everything that embodies what Katniss hates. Katniss like, shoots birds and squirrels and for, uh, to survive, and Effie wears them in her hair. Everything large. <laughs> the sleeves are large, or the skirt has something on it that's large. Everything's a little outrageous. <gasps> oh, my goodness! We just sort of created her one day in the trailer, and it was like, <gasps> There she is, like there's Effie. And we, we say that every morning when I start to put this on, it's like, she's not there yet, she's not there yet. And then a moment happens every day when, I, when I'm getting ready that's like, here's Effie, she's arrived. Okay. We are all any of the things going to be talking about. Every time Elizabeth showed up to work, I was so excited to see her outfit. It was just like, access this female part of my brain I didn't even know I have. I was like, oh my god, the fabric, the colors. Each wig changes with her outfit, but there's a primness, a properness. She always wears her gloves. You know, a little bit of a school mom. Listen your corset, have a drink. Yeah, let's accentuate where an amazing place it is, okay? Okay. One more. You know when you have those nightmares where you're like, oh my god, I had this dream that I was in this ridiculous dress in front of hundreds of people I don't know, <laughs> and I had to spin around like an idiot? And you're like, thank God it was just a dream. The girl on fire dress, we wanted it to be a little simpler than the book. Not quite so sparkly and dancing with the stars. You know, Sin is a very elegant man, so we thought he would design a very simple, elegant dress. I went to Judiana and I said, Judiana, do you have more of the stones that you used in her gown? And she said, yes. And I said, may I put some on her shoulder just to kind of do it and I went a little crazy and I added some stones that I had to. So it looked like it just exploded off onto her skin and it was really beautiful and she was, you know, just like a princess that day. Are we balanced okay here? Do we need to do anything different? Uh, yeah, you need to get off. <laughs> I mean, the chariot outfit is rough. That's like wearing, I, I, I don't even know, like fitting into a leather sock. We went a little farther than the book. In the book, it's basically leotards and tights, and we decided it had to have the look and shine of coal and be more dramatic. When I would take it off, I would have just like red marks all over my body. When she does the, the chariot ride, you know, because of her signature braid from the book, I'm building a headdress, all of these different braids to keep her in the continuity of that. It'd be French braiding, fishbone braiding, we're, we're basket weaving. She actually has a helmet on. We have decided that the men of Capital City are basically going to be very groomed. <laughs> Which means to me like they just spend a little bit too much time in front of the mirror. Maybe they've had some surgical fix-its and things like that. I've never seen myself with mascara on before. So it's a shock every time I look in the mirror. World champion freestyle sideburns. In the uh, beer community, it's called a toilet paper roll. Do a quick curling iron with it, wrap it around a can and spray it and blow it. And and it's done. Seneca is our head gamekeeper, and so I really wanted to create a really fantastic look for Wes. But she went in and she just started kind of going at my beard, and uh, um, she came up with the, the sickest design. Like, you know, like this is, 
really cool and immediately Seneca has uh, identification, you know, that, that Seneca crane, which again adds to the sort of celebrity status of a game maker. I think Gary's first reaction was, oh my God, Mephistopheles, you know, he just thought, oh, he, it's like the devil. And I thought, well, you know what, he is the devil. He's the one sending all these children to their graves, you know? And he goes, okay, well, you can keep it. Just make these curvy things not so big, because originally they were big hooks, really big ones. I'm hoping to see little kids uh, at Halloween wearing the cynic beard. There will be approximately four or five days where we have between 350 and 450 extras who all will be done in Capital City makeups. 30 hair, 30 makeup. And we're just gonna hope we get through it. <laughs> I'm going to have some very tired people working for me. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. How's it going? They check in, they get their photos, they get their wig, they wait, they go to one of these spectacular hairdressers. They get their hair done, they go to makeup, they go to wardrobe if they're not already dressed, and they go out and shoot them. Ladies and gentlemen, your master of ceremonies, Caesar! Caesar Flickerman was a great makeup to do. We did his eyebrows like a dark blue to complement his wig and enhanced his tan and put bronzers on him. I thought, this is great. He can be really tan with these really white teeth. He'll be like the George Hamilton of the capital city, you know? And Stanley absolutely loved it. He had so much fun with that character. Slap my hand. Do it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she sweet? Those of you who don't know, tracker tackers are genetically engineered wasps whose venom causes searing pain and in extreme cases, death. The tracker jacker attack on Glimmer is one of the Three, featured prosthetics two, in the film. One, go. These hybrid wasps uh, attack and they create these huge welts and it ultimately kills her. I really wanted to stick to the description in the book. And that was really horrific. This is a behind the scenes of Zombie Apocalypse 2, The Reaping. And um, I'm actually playing zombie extra number five. My whole arm was in the molding silicone yeah. so that they could get a replica of my arm, basically, and kind of come up with this design. They came up with a pretty gnarly look. Glimmer's makeup is made out of encapsulated silicone, which means that the appliances are very squishy inside, so it feels like swollen flesh. Everybody loved poking them. I use a, a surgical grade adhesive, and uh, it's blended in with a little, what we call edger, and that blends right into the skin. From that point, I use what we call illustrator colors, and we blend them into the skin. I'm um, actually just having really bad breakouts. Oh, okay. Didn't even notice. Just cover that up. Yeah. yeah. This is it. I'm so wanting to pop. I think you're done, girl. Cool. How's it feel like? You're, you're bit in bed. <laughs> My suggestion to Gary was that we make a prosthetic body for Glimmer so that at the end she doesn't have to be in, in a really huge, you know, elaborate, awful makeup. Oh, hi, girl. Hey, girl, hey. Evidently, Gary liked the makeup on her a lot better, so I believe we just wound up not using the body at all. It did get a little bit of use, though. Josh put it in uh, Jennifer's bathroom one day, and she opened it up, and the dummy was sitting on her toilet, and it was quite disturbing for her. She, I heard her scream all the way in the makeup room with my door closed. <laughs> Shout out to Juliana for making these uh, coats so hot. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> hot, like it's in cool. Hot is in okay, cool, obviously. We'll be... In the book, everybody wears exactly the same thing. That's fine in a book, but in a film, you're not going to know who anybody is if everybody's in a black jacket. So Gary made the decision that each each district would have their own color jacket, and everything else could be the same. I'm the head Adrian Dyer. I help the designer colors. These are all the jackets for the tributes in the arena. 72 four-yard pieces. It's like 280 yards, 11 different colors. 
in the book they all have khaki pants, we decided green looked better with our colors. Uh, we wanted things that would blend in with the forest. We considered all the stonework with those jackets. We considered that they were harnesses, they were padding, and they could feel comfortable and roll around and they would stay on. So all of that came into consideration. My game's costume was great in the fitting. <laughs> it was perfect. As soon as we took it out in 100 and something degree weather, the leather boots and the, and the jacket and the pants was a lot different. I actually started wearing bike shorts and then just taking my pants off and just having my pants around my ankles outside. I was like, I don't even care anymore. I don't care. And like the AD said something about like photographers or something. I'm like, dude, I, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it was so hot. I was starstruck by the Mockingjay pin. It's the start of the revolution. It's, it's everything of it. the games. And then you see it and you're like, of course that's what it looks like. The Mockingjay, which is exactly what you would imagine the Mockingjay looking like, and an arrow going through it. And it was an honor to wear that. It was really, it was really cool. We're trying to make it as visually stunning as the book is. You know, I've done big wig shows and stuff like that, but in Capital City, that might be an 80-year-old woman wearing lime green hair. You're worried that it's gonna come across like a Halloween party or a carnival. We don't want it to be silly, and there is that very fine line there. It really is a collaborative effort, and Judiana's clothing was so inspirational. There's a misconception that hair does hair, and makeup does makeup, and I just do the clothes but it doesn't really work that way. We do it all together, and I think it's more successful that way. As a young adult, I remember reading books and going to see them in the movies, and it can get disappointed, because I really want the young people to have that fantasy world in front of them and see everything that they saw in the book.